Soot free. Give, put your hands together. Hello. Right, so uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of women who have inspired me to be bold for change. And the context, so the, the, the kind of thing that I'm talking about is really comes down to looking after yourself looking out for yourself, not giving yourself a hard time, because I think that's something that women in particular do. I don't think we're always very nice to ourselves. So this is this is about that, really. Um, and the first one that I'm going to talk about is a woman called Julia Darling. This is one of her poetry books. Um, she died in 2005. She died of breast cancer. Um, I was very lucky to have met her a few times. She was a, a poet and a novelist and a playwright. Uh, and I'm going to read you my favourite one of her poems, if I can find the bookmarks, I'm sure I put in there, there it is. So I'm just going to start with this. It's called Don't Worry. Don't worry about the food you haven't bought, if your daughter caught that train, the bill that came, the twinge in your right leg, don't fuss. The washing on the line will dry again. It's not your fault. So what if you lied? Don't be ashamed. And don't worry that you promised. It doesn't matter about those promises. Let them go. Just tell her you don't like her if you don't. You needn't see the doctor with bad breath. Behave badly. Lie on the floor. Throw a tantrum if you're bored. Be late. Be sordid, eat six pies, <laughs> or trick them by being euphoric. Above your head, a flock of geese are flying south. Beneath your feet, worms aren't worrying. <laughs> so, I mean, I love that. I mean, you, you all laughed. You could feel the humour, the life, the, you know, the passion and the just irreverence in it. And, okay, so she's telling you to tell lies, don't keep your promises, be rude to people. And, you know, maybe don't do that all the time. <laughs> maybe pick your moments. But I suppose the point is to not give yourself a hard time when you're not perfect, when you break those promises, when you tell lies, when you do things you shouldn't do. It's okay because we all do those things. Um, so, and, and I met Julia a few times, uh, and she was, she actually had cancer for at least 10 years. She was ill for a long time. And that poem was written in the context of being very ill uh, and, and giving herself permission to just not be perfect. Um, and, uh, and one of the things that I learned from Julia was actually about dying, because she she did die and she you know you could have said that she was dying for quite a long time but she wasn't dying she was only dying in those last few seconds the rest of the time she was living and you know the older we get the more likely it is that we'll know people who who are do how terribly ill or who have terminal illnesses and i found that knowing julia has been really helpful to me so that's one woman that has inspired me another woman i want to talk about is a woman called steve who I met when I was 17, who thankfully is still alive. Uh, and um, I actually, so this next bit of the talk, I very nearly bottled out at the last minute and completely changed the topic because I was a bit worried. And I am, I, I suppose the, the reason I was a bit worried about this next bit is I'm kind of making myself slightly vulnerable by telling you this next story. But I think that's actually important. I think that it's really important that people are able to be vulnerable in front of other people because then it makes those other people able to do it too. Uh, and I think when you're telling stories, you have to, if you're talking about being bold, if there have been times in your life when you've been brave then and done something a bit scary, then it helps to tell other people about those times. So I met Dee when I was 17 and I met her because when I was 17, I decided that I was going to be a lesbian. Uh, and the reason I made that decision um, was because, uh, well, I, so what actually happened was that I'd had a couple of boyfriends, it had been pretty rubbish, the physical side of things pretty fraught, not much fun, uh, and uh, I had my friend Bev had a friend called Tim, who she worked with in Pizza Hut, uh, and Tim was gay, and Tim said to Bev that he thought that my boyfriend Joe was gay. 
And he also told Bev that he thought it would do me good to go out with a few girls. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, I thought about this and I thought, you know what? I think he's got a point. <laughs> so I actually, I knew that I was attracted to girls. So, uh, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't plucking this completely out of the blue. Uh, and I thought, well, actually, it would make life so much easier. You know, I would know what was going on. I would understand their bodies and it would just be easier. And so I did. I told everybody I'm a lesbian. Uh, and, but then it was like, oh, well, yeah, OK, but now what? Uh, and I, I, I managed to have one date with, with, with a woman, which didn't go very well. Uh, and, and, and she kind of left me high and dry. And then I got a phone call from Dee. So this is where Dee comes into the story. And what had happened was this woman that I had a date with had felt a bit bad about kind of leaving this 17-year-old girl stranded. So she contacted her friend Dave, who was 19, uh, and who was at, at university, and, and asked Dave to take me under her wing, and that's what Dave did. So Dave invited me round to her house for tea, and uh, she lived in this amazing shared student house, which at the age of 17 just was fantastic. It smelled of cinnamon and coffee, and it was colourful, and it was full of colourful people. And there, there were artists living there, there was one bloke who was a clown, uh, and, you know, I mean, it was just, I, lo I loved it there. And, and, um, and Dave, you know, she made me a pot of Earl Grey tea and she made me some scones. And she taught me her five rules of life. So Dave's five rules of life. Dave, by the way, stands for devious. She's actually called Deborah. Uh, everybody calls her Dave. Uh, so the five rules of life, I'm not going to explain all of them. Most of them are self-explanatory. The first one, just because you understand it doesn't mean you have to like it. Second one, the way to a woman's stomach is through her stomach. <laughs> and the point of that was that people respond to food. If you want to make friends, feed them. Um, the third one, never fall in love with a straight woman. So the point of that was to avoid heartache. The fourth one, be firm but fair. But my favourite one, the fifth one, use your goat. So use your goat <laughs> comes from um, Dave's friend Andrew who she went to visit in Surrey, I think it was, uh, and his mum uh, was standing in the garden, leaning over a fence and looking out at a field where there was a goat grazing. And she said to Debbie, she turned to Debbie and she said, Debbie, always use your goat. And what she meant was, so this piece of land was a, a kind of just a rough piece of land that they happened to own that was adjacent to the, their garden. And they were having real difficulty keeping the grass mown. But then they, but they also had a goat, and they worked out that they could put the goat in the field, and the goat would mow the grass. Yeah. And the point is to always use resources in ways that you wouldn't have thought of using them. Uh, and Dave, Dave was, um, I mean, Dave was just fantastic. She, she looked after me. She became my mentor. She was really short, and she always wore giant DM boots, and she had a really loud laugh. Yeah. And she was just a lovely woman. And but what she did was introduce me to a lot of other women. Uh, and, and I became part of a, you know, a sort of a community, and not just women, but, but people who were looking after each other. And that, at the age of 17, having that, having a community, having people who were looking out for me, um, and, and, and who were being bold together, was, was a wonderful thing. And that one of my strongest memories from that time, a year after that, when I was 18, I moved to Manchester. And this is a long time ago, because I'm not young. Uh, and uh, I, my very first job in Manchester, I was working in a, an all-women, vegetarian, workers' cooperative restaurant in Chawton. Uh, uh, and nearly everybody who worked there was a lesbian. There was only one woman who wasn't. Uh, and because we were a co-op and we were under a certain size, we could get around the equal ops leg um, legislation. So we were allowed to only employ women. Uh, and, uh, and one of the things that was happening at the time, or a little while after that, was a piece of legislation called Clause 28, which is where the government were trying to say that it would be illegal for schools and local governments to promote homosexuality. So what they were basically saying was that teachers aren't allowed to talk to children about homosexuality, uh, or councils, or anybody, which is actually a really nasty piece of homophobic legislation, particularly when you think about teenagers who might be uh, coming to terms with their sexuality. There are gay teenagers, and they're being, what they're saying is that nobody's allowed to talk to them about it. Um, so there was a lot of campaigning, and there was a demonstration, uh, and one of my favorite memories is a demonstration that we all went on, so we had a coach and a bunch of women all went up to London, down to London, 
uh, and demonstrated. And um, we uh, we had this slogan, which <laughs> okay. So I have to sing this. I'm really sorry. It was sung, and and this is how it goes. Uh, it's only short. Don't worry. Uh, and I remember I have to start low because it goes really high. So it, it, it went. Um, we are brazen hussies and we don't give a damn. We're loud, we're raucous, and we're fighting for our rights and our sex and our need to be free. And I've never forgotten that. That that kind of for me encapsulates that feeling of being part of something, being bold, campaigning. Um, and uh, not long after that, I don't know, when I was about 20, 21, I, I had to acknowledge that actually I found men attracted too. <laughs> uh, and in fact, I'm bisexual and I'm now uh, together with a man and I've been able to form, you know, a very strong, good relationship with a man. And I think that that period in my life really helped because actually when you're 17 and, you know, boys are rubbish, girls are rubbish, nobody tells teenagers how to form relationships. Nobody tells boys how girls work. Nobody tells girls how boys work. It's really hard to negotiate all that stuff. And I just sidestepped that. I said, well, I'm just not going to do this now. Uh, and instead, what I did was find myself a community of people who could nurture me and, and, and help me get through that bit of my life so that I came out of it much stronger. Uh, and I wrote down kind of the, the sort of, I don't know, messages that I want to convey from all of this. Um, one of them is about how important, how helpful it is to be supported by a network of women. And I really value the fact that there are events like this and that there are lots of initiatives. So I work in IT, so I really value the fact that there are lots of initiatives now specifically for women, because actually women being able to support each other is a really powerful thing. But not just that, people need communities, people need support. And that can be quite hard to come by, but it's a really, really valuable thing. Um, another thing is about taking control of your destiny. Actually, make you know, I just decided to be a lesbian. And uh, it <laughs> kind of sounds crazy now, but it was a really good thing to do. You know, it made a difference. Um, the, the, I've written down here, don't put up with shit. So, you know, boyfriends were rubbish, so I didn't put up with it. Um, and, but the last one I've written down here is that men are important too. Because I don't want you to think that what I'm trying to say is... Um, that uh, men are rubbish and I was better off without men and we'll all be better off without men because I don't think that at all. I actually think that um, as women we need to support each other but life can be hard for women and we're not going to change the world for women unless we bring men with us. We need men's help. I think it's fantastic to see men in the room here today. So it's about all of us, it's about everybody.